in this module we would be studying the hexaroelian theory or the hexaroelian uh, model in detail but first we need to know the background as we know classicals always laid emphasis on the comparative advantage theory and the absolute advantage theory as they explain how as these theories explain how trade takes place between two nations and how these nations gain from the trade amongst these two nations the country with a lower comparative advantage or an opportunity cost has the advantage in a uh, lower comparative cost has an advantage in the production of the commodity and hence complete specialization in a commodity in which it has a relatively lower cost is possible so that it produces out of two commodities x and y if it has got a relatively lower cost in x then it produces x entirely and then it uh, imports y from the other country at the partner country and then the surplus of what it consumes uh, of the commodity x is exported back to the second country hence complete specialization is also possible under such circumstances similarly the other country which imports commodity x would have a relatively an advantage in the production of y and they would do the opposite they would produce a commodity y and they would export it to the first country in uh, in lieu of the uh, export that they are receiving from the first country accordingly to the according to the ricardian theory which who is responsible david ricardo who is responsible for the comparative cost advantage theory the assumption is that labor is the only factor of production or the when we talk about the cost of production then according to ricard ricardo all such costs are to be measured only in terms of labor productivity so the international differences uh, naturally exist between countries in terms of their labor productivities and this leads to changes in the or differences in the uh, opportunity cost and because of better labor productivity higher labor productivity or higher efficiency of labor the prices of the production of certain commodities in which the country has got a comparative advantage would be lower therefore it would be having a favorable international can fetch a favorable international price but it does not explain why such differences arise in the first place the hexaroelian theorem is an attempt to explain the basic reason of why such differences exist amongst countries and which leads to the comparative cost differences differentials across countries the hexaroelian model was first conceived by two swedish economists eli hexer and bertil ohlin in 19 respectively in 1919 and 1933 according to the hexaroelian uh, theorem trade is only partly explained by the labor productivity it also reflects the differences in countries factor endowments that is how much of capital and how much of labor does a country possess these uh, the abundance or the relative scarcity of a particular factor of production would shape the trading patterns and their nature of the specialization so according to the hexaroelian theorem trade is not solely dependent upon labor productivity but it depends upon the factor endowment hence the 
classical theory of comparative advantage is not a complete explanation of why trade takes place and what would be the pattern of trade or how specialization takes place. Therefore, this needs to be supplemented by the Hexerolian theorem which of course also accepts the comparative advantage theory but goes beyond it to tell us about some basic causes for international trade something which goes beyond the obvious uh, reference to labor productivity and cost of production. After studying this module you shall be able to get a closer look at the international trade in the real world, identify the important determinants of difference in pre-trade relative commodity prices and comparative advantage among nations, and learn how differences in comparative costs arise. You shall be able to describe how the Heckscher Orlin model one of the most important models of international trade works and how it explains patterns of trade. Analyze how differences in resource endowments creates a bias for the production of a certain commodity. Before proceeding to a detailed analysis of the Heckscher Olin HO theorem, we need to first understand a number of assumptions on which it is based. It is based on the following 10 assumptions. 1. Two countries, two commodities and two factors. 2. Each commodity is produced under constant returns to scale. 3. Perfect competition in all markets. 4. Technology is given and identical. 5. Consumer tastes are identical across countries. 6. Factors are mobile within each country but immobile between countries. 7. No transportation costs. 8. Free trade. 9. Commodities are ranked in terms of their factor intensity and 10. Complete specialization is not possible. In continuation with the Ricardian model, assumption of two countries and two commodities, HO model further assumes that there are two factors of production that is labor and capital instead of a single factor of production assumed earlier and that both factors are employed in the production of both commodities. In short, it is a 2 into 2 into 2 model. The two commodities are produced under constant returns to scale. That is, if both inputs are doubled, the output will also double. The next assumption is the presence of perfect competition in all the markets. This assumption rules out monopolistic and oligopolistic market structures. It also rules out price and wage rigidities. Every firm is a price taker. Each country is too small to exert market power and influence market price. Also, perfect competition means that in the long run, there are no economic profits. Each factor is paid according to their marginal product and everyone in the economy has perfect knowledge. The two commodities are produced with the same technology in both nations. The available means of production are the same no matter where we are. This is an unrealistic assumption but it is assumed in order to focus one's attention on differences in factor endowments alone in explaining trade. The HO model next assumes that the consumer tastes are identical across countries. Consumer demands are assumed to be approximately similar in both countries. And since consumer preferences 
are represented by indifference curves, this assumption implies that ICs for the two countries will be identical. This is again assumed to make factor endowment the key operating force at the margin. Factors, that is labor and capital, can move across industries within each country, but they cannot move across countries. This means that factors can move from high paying industry to low paying industry until earnings are equalized in all industries. But there is zero international factor mobility so that international differences in factor earnings would persist in the absence of trade. Transportation costs are assumed to be zero. It is true that transportation costs inhibit and reduce trade volume, but it does not reverse the trade pattern between the countries. The purpose is not to ignore reality, but to illuminate the pure effects of trade. HO model is based on the assumption that final outputs are traded freely. If a nation has two commodities and two factors, then one commodity will require relatively more of one factor than the other commodity and thus can be ranked in terms of capital labor ratio. This is being done to make the theorem simpler to analyze. The introduction of international trade does not cause complete specialization in the production of goods in either country. This means that both nations will be producing both commodities after trade. In the last assumption, we stated that commodities are ranked in terms of their factor intensity and then one commodity will be labor intensive having a lower capital labor ratio and the other commodity will necessarily be capital intensive. To understand it more clearly, it is necessary to understand the terms factor intensity and factor abundance. Only then we can derive the shape of the production frontier. Let us take an example to understand this better. Let us assume that there are two countries nation one and nation two. The two commodities are commodity X, which is a capital commodity and commodity Y, which is an agriculture commodity. Take commodity X to be capital intensive. That is, it can be produced with less labor relative to capital and it has a higher capital labor ratio and commodity Y to be labor intensive commodity, that is, it requires a substantial amount of labor relative to capital. Further assume that nation one specializes in producing the capital commodity and nation two is considered to be an agricultural country and thus specializes in commodity Y. Let us understand it with the given example. To produce one unit of commodity X, nation one requires five units of capital and five units of labor. Whereas to produce the same one unit of commodity X, nation two requires 10 units of capital and five units of labor. To produce one unit of commodity Y, nation one needs five units of capital and 10 units of labor. Whereas nation two requires five units of capital and five units of labor. The term factor intensity refers to the relative proportion of the various factors of production used to make a given product. In other words, Factor intensity 
looks at how much an industry uses capital, for instance, as opposed to labor. When we say that commodity Y is labor intensive, it means that labor is used relatively more in the production of commodity Y than in the production of commodity X. This is equivalent to saying that labor capital ratio, that is L by K used in the production of commodity Y is greater than L by K used in the production of commodity X. That is L by K for commodity Y is greater than L by K for commodity X. Or in other terms, K by L for commodity X is greater than K by L for commodity Y when defined in terms of capital labor ratio. Similarly, for capital intensive commodity, commodity X, K by L for commodity X is greater than K by L for commodity Y. As shown in the diagram, we have taken labor on X axis and capital on Y axis. Consider the case of nation one, which requires five units of capital and five units of labor to produce one unit of commodity X. Five units of capital and 10 units of labor to produce one unit of commodity Y. K by L ratio in the production of commodity X is 5 by 5, which is equal to 1, which is shown by the green line in the diagram. In the production of commodity Y, it is 1 upon 2, which is shown by the blue line. Since K by L for commodity X is greater than K by L for commodity Y, this implies that commodity X is capital intensive and commodity Y is labor intensive. Similarly, in the case of nation two, machine production requires more capital relative to labor. Its capital labor ratio is higher and for commodity Y production, the capital labor ratio is lower. Hence, as in the diagram, the steeper the line, the greater the slope, and hence, the product with the steeper slope is more capital intensive. While talking about factor intensity, we always talk in terms of capital per unit of labor and not in absolute terms. Even though in the above example, absolute amount of capital used is also higher in the production of commodity Y than in the commodity X, but the factor intensity should always be looked upon in relative terms. For example, if in the above example, nation one's production pattern changes such that now 15 units of capital and 30 units of labor produce one unit of commodity Y, then absolute amount of capital used in the production of commodity Y is higher than used in the production of machines. But K by L for commodity Y, which is one upon two, is less than the K by L for commodity X, which is one implying that machine is capital intensive. Factor abundance is the resource richness of nations. There are two definitions of factor abundance, one in terms of physical quantities and the other in terms of factor prices. According to the definition in terms of physical units, the factor abundance of one nation is defined by the relative endowment of capital to labor in one nation relative to another nation. Nation one is capital abundant if the ratio of the total amount of capital 
to the total amount of labor Tk by Tl available in nation 1 is greater than that in nation 2. That is, Tk by Tl for nation 1 is greater than Tk by Tl for nation 2. We will assume that nation 1 is capital abundant and nation 2 is labor abundant. According to the definition in terms of factor prices, nation 1 is capital abundant if the ratio of the rental price of capital to the price of labor time, that is PK by PL, is lower in nation 1 than in nation 2. Since rental price of capital is usually taken to be the interest rate, that is R, while the price of labor time is the wage rate, that is W. Then PK by PL equals R by W. Then PK by PL for nation 1 is less than PK by PL for nation 2. This is because capital abundance in nation 1 leads to a lower price of it in the said nation and similarly a higher price of the relatively scarce factor. We all know that demand and supply together determine the price of a commodity. But here we assume that demand conditions are the same everywhere and it is only the supply of various factors of production that differ. Hence, it becomes the sole determinant of the factor prices. Factor prices will be different among different nations due to different factor endowments. As studied above, nation 1 is the capital abundant nation and each factor is paid according to its marginal product so that the price of capital will be lower in nation 1 relative to nation 2 where labor will be cheaply available as it is a labor abundant country. Capital is cheap and labor is expensive in nation 1. Labor is cheap and capital is expensive in nation 2. Stated in equation terms, this means R by W for nation 1 is less than R by W for nation 2. We take factor abundance in factor prices because this definition considers both demand and supply factors because the price of any commodity is determined by demand and supply while physical quantity definition takes only supply factors. However, since we have assumed that tastes to be the same in both nations, so the two definitions coincide. Hence, we have nation 1 as the capital abundant nation and commodity X is the capital intensive commodity. Nation 1 can produce relatively more of commodity X and at a lower cost than nation 2. Nation 2 is the labor abundant nation and commodity Y is the labor intensive commodity. Nation 2 can produce relatively more of commodity Y and at a lower cost than nation 1. In the diagram, we have production possibility frontier of two nations. The commodity X is shown on X axis and commodity Y is shown on Y axis. Nation 2 PPF is skewed towards output of commodity Y and nation 1 PPF is skewed towards commodity X. It can be seen from the diagram that PPF of nation 2 is relatively flatter and wider than in nation 1. The different shapes of different production possibility frontiers are due to the fact that the two countries 
have different amount of the two factors of production. The PPF is biased towards the factor in which they have the abundance. From the discussions above, we know Nation 1 has a comparative advantage in the production of commodity X, the commodity which requires the intensive use of its abundant factor. Nation 2 has a comparative advantage in the production of commodity Y, the commodity which requires the intensive use of its abundant factor. This is because Nation 2 is labor abundant and hence labor is cheaply available and commodity Y is labor intensive. So Nation 2 can produce commodity Y with lowest costs and hence gain comparative advantage over it. Similarly, Nation 1, which is the capital abundant nation, gains comparative advantage over the capital intensive commodity, namely machines. Now, we will understand the heckscher orlin theorem in detail. The theorem states that a nation should produce and export the commodity whose production requires the intensive use of the nation's relatively abundant and cheap factor and import the commodity whose production requires the intensive use of the nation's relatively scarce and expensive factor. In simple words, capital intensive country exports capital intensive product and labor intensive country exports labor intensive product. It is only the difference in physical availability of resources or supply of factors of production that causes the difference in relative commodity prices in different nations and hence creates a basis for trade. The HO theorem examines resource differences as the only source of trade. It shows the proportions in which different factors of production are available in different countries and the different proportions in which they are used in producing different commodities. This is also referred to as factor proportions or factor endowment theory. In the diagram, we have the production possibility frontier of the two countries. Commodity X is represented on X axis and commodity Y is represented on Y axis. The PPF for nation 2 is skewed towards commodity Y, which is the labor intensive commodity. And PPF for nation 1 is skewed towards commodity X. Since tastes are assumed to be the same in both nations, the preferences of consumers can be represented by a single IC. The same IC1 is tangent to the PPF of both nations at point A and point A- dash respectively. This is the autarky, that is, no trade equilibrium where the production and consumption points are same for both the nations. The price line for both nations is given by price of X is equal to price of commodity Y by commodity X and price in nation 2 and price of Y is equal to price of commodity Y by price of commodity X in nation 1. From the above diagram, it can be clearly seen that price of X is less than price of Y. This means nation 1 has a lower price for commodity X and thus holds comparative advantage in producing commodity X. And similarly, nation 2 has a comparative advantage in commodity Y. Now let us look at how equilibrium is achieved 
when two nations trade with each other. In the given diagram, nation 2 will specialize in the production of commodity Y and will reach point B dash. Similarly, nation 1 will specialize in the production of commodity X and will reach point B where the PPF of the two nations are tangent to their relative price line that is the rate at which they exchange with each other. Nation 2 will export commodity Y and nation 1 will export commodity X and in this process they both will reach equilibrium point E on IC. Here we can see that nation 2 exports of commodity Y equals nation 1 imports of commodity Y and nation 1 exports of commodity 1 equals nation 2 exports of commodity X. The two trade triangles BCE and B-C-E are equal. At point E, nation 2 has more of commodity X but less of commodity Y than before it had at the previous point but it still gains because point E is on a higher IC. Similarly, at point E, nation 1 involves more of commodity Y and less of commodity X but it is also better off by trading because it is on a higher IC. So, both nations gain from trade by consuming on a higher indifference curve. Hence, following the HO theorem, both the nations gain from trade. On the whole, the module can be summarized in the following manner. The hexaroland model presented in this uh, module extends to our trade uh, model which explains, which is explained in terms of comparative advantage. That is originally why trade takes place was explained in terms of the opportunity cost, the labor productivity and the international specialization which happens due to the comparative cost advantage. Now later on uh, there were other developments and now it is based on a number of assumptions, the 2 into 2 into 2 model, the same technology in both nations, the identical taste, perfect competition in all markets, no transportation cost, internal mobility but no international mobility of factors and that all resources are fully employed, that constant returns to scale avail and that two commodities are labor intensive and one commodity is uh, that is first the first commodity is labor intensive and the second commodity is capital intensive. It is under these assumptions that the comparative cost advantage theory is explained. Now to understand the role of resources that is factors of production in trade, a new model was developed in which two commodities differ in terms of the factor intensity that is called the wage rental ratio that means the factors of production that is labor and capital have got certain uh, remuneration in the form of wages and rent that is rental price of capital. So we start by saying in the Hexerolin theorem we start by saying that the wage rental ratio is different amongst or uh, between two nations and this happens because the factor abundance in these two nations is different. One country would be abundant in labor and the other would be abundant in capital. Accordingly, the ratio of wages to the rental price of capital would differ and hence the factor prices differ and this leads to uh, also productivity 
being different in physical terms. So, accordingly, we wish to understand the relationship between the production of two commodities and this is depicted with the help of the production possibility frontier in each case. Now, the PP frontier would be skewed towards the commodity in which a particular country has a comparative advantage. The Hexerolin theorem is a general equilibrium theorem and it shows how economic forces jointly determine the price of the final commodities. Also, the Hexerolin theorem or the factor endowment theorem states that the country should export the commodity which uses the abundant factor intensively and imports the other commodity which is in short supply. In this way, the two nations could reach a higher indifference curve and therefore, the welfare, the social welfare of both countries would be higher and hence both countries stand to gain if they specialize in accordance with their factor abundance or their relative factor intensities or the factor price ratios which are reflecting these factor intensities or factor abundance.